So yeah, the, Bloom's taxonomy is so applicable in so many aspects of our teaching. And we've mentioned some of those, and you've mentioned some great ones, and you've asked some great questions. And you know, I find that it's very helpful in uh, putting together assessments, tests, quizzes, also performance assessments. And, and part of this topic was curriculum, and we haven't touched too much on that yet, but it's a tremendous tool that we can use to develop expected learning outcomes. What, what we want the students to achieve, what we want the students to learn. And you know, it's very helpful in that, in developing and, and putting together a curriculum for the different subjects. And when you see this quote up here, the purpose of education is to change the thoughts, feelings, and actions of students. What does that mean to you? What does that, how does that pull on your heartstrings as a teacher when you see that quote? And this is a quote from Benjamin Bloom himself, connecting it with everything we've been talking about so far this evening. I find it a bit cold, a bit brainwashing, uh, a, bit, a bit intrusive, rather than letting the children develop and... Okay. That's a good point. Okay. Good reflection on that. Anyone else? Changing the whole person is in design. Thoughts, feelings, actions is changing the whole student. Okay. It is potentially dangerous, isn't it? I mean, if this is in the hands of, former, of one of the former Soviet uh, dictators, it's a bit scary, isn't it? <laughs> or, you know, General Tan Shui up there in Burma, right? It's yeah. kind of like, who is in charge of this process? I, I think there's an yeah. assumption buried under this, yeah. is that you're doing it for the good of the child, isn't it? Yeah. But, but it, 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 I can see that. I can see some people being a bit wary. I mean, I, I, I kind of share some of that, yeah. Hopefully from negative to positive. Yeah, yeah, we hope, yeah. right? Sure. Uh, yeah. It's it's not behaviorism to the extreme where you know Hitler brainwashing an entire nation of people, you know, to, to follow his kind of beliefs, right? What, what we want to see happen is through um, we want to see a change of behavior. Obviously, we want students to be able to construct, and we want them to uh, cognitively think at levels that are you know more challenging and and really stretch them to the point where they're thinking outside the box and they're actually critically thinking for themselves and they're creating from themselves. And I think that's what he's kind of trying to say, that through their own actions, they're not just sitting there like robots uh, having information pointed to their heads. It's not just rote memorization of facts and figures and, and ideas, but they're going to create change. They're, they're going to grow and develop. They're going to bloom into going back to what we connecting back to what we said in the very beginning bloom into and become you know something beautiful and amazing that maybe we never even expected when we first saw them walk into our classroom as a teacher and i think that that's kind of the, the internal self-initiated intrinsic change that maybe he's talking about that we as teachers can help facilitate i mean we can't you know pump out robots in, in our image, we can only help facilitate, coach, you know, direct that process and try to motivate them to do that for themselves. Okay, moving along. Um, so there are three domains, as we uh, very rightly heard. Thank you for that. And uh, we're just kind of focusing mainly on the cognitive today. Um, I think to fully do Bloom's taxonomy justice, we need countless hours and many, many uh, days and and presentations and workshops on it. But there is the effective domain and the psychomotor domain, as we mentioned. But uh, for the sake of time, we'll have to move on and continue concentrating on uh, the cognitive domain. I think it's important, to, I'm sorry to jump in a bit here, David, but I think it's important to remember in this context, though, that Bloom is essentially a cognitive psychologist, right? I mean, so his work, even though he recognizes, as, as do most uh, scholars out there, certainly today, that there's these three domains. He, his focus is on cognitive domain in his work. Is that not correct? That's correct. That's correct. Okay, um, we have a couple diagrams that are coming up, and I'm sure you've seen these before across the net or in different research you've done on this topic. And nothing new, it's already been on the board in a way, so some people look at it as a pyramid. And you notice something though. 
And even if we put up the next one, which is stairs, kind of like the video we saw, and the ladder, you'll notice something about these steps and the ones that we have on the board. Anybody notice a distinct difference? Or maybe you see there's a slight difference? They become active. Okay. They're now verbs instead of nouns. Okay, very good. Okay, you see that? Here we have uh, knowledge, and now we have remembering. We have comprehension, and now we have understanding. Okay, so over the years, in fact, uh, Bloom students actually, uh, people who studied under Bloom took these concepts, these ideas, and they um, upgraded them, uh, tweaked them, changed them, adjusted them, adapted them in different ways. And to try to make it a bit more applicable as we learn more, and we are always learning more, and we're always developing and progressing. And so as we um, go through this, we find that there's a new, updated, revised taxonomy or classification. So Bloom developing the original one, and we've already learned that it's a great uh, planning tool for our classroom. And then continuing on, it's, I find this quite amazing that you know, we're developing this in the 1950s, and it's still being talked about so much in education classrooms all around the world today. It's still being talked about in schools and PD, professional development programs all around the world today. So obviously, this is something you know, that's had a high impact on education throughout the years. It hasn't come and gone. It hasn't come and then disappeared you know, into nothingness. It's, it's here. It's, and it's still being talked about, learned about, practiced, applied in so many different ways. And I find that very interesting. And every time I go back to it, I learn something new. Every time I go back to it, I'm reminded of how I need to improve myself. I may not agree with every single thing that Bloom said, but it is a very helpful tool, as we're seeing. And as we continue on, uh, one of his students, uh, Mr. Anderson, developed this into the revised taxonomy that you see on the board. And a number of changes were made. As Dr. Andy pointed out, we have verbs now rather than nouns. We have actions taking place. I think that's a very important update, upgrade, change. And Is anybody doing Anderson? Nobody, pick, nobody picked out one, right? It was on the list, but nobody picked it, right? Yeah. Somebody's doing it, right? Yes? Somebody's doing it? No. No. It was on the list, but nobody chose it, right? Yes. Good. No, I'm just saying that. So you guys can talk about where he is now you want, because nobody's doing it. Yeah, I just want to make sure. Let me check that you actually. We're not stealing anybody's. No, no, I'm not like that. I don't mean like that. But you see another. Good, you're doing You see another interesting change here. And what's that? Dr. Renee pointed out a very important one. But there's something else. You see a little switch. Creating now goes to the top. What do you think that is in this update, in this revision, this change? What has happened in education in recent years, say the past 10, 20 years? Creativity is more important. I mean, think about what we've been doing the last couple of weeks. You know, we learned about creativity, an awesome presentation on that, discovery learning, an awesome presentation on that. I mean, it's just the hot topic of the day, right? Getting kids hands-on and, and creating and, and when they're actually doing it. So, I mean, this is really applicable to... Well, there's a difference, too, though. Look at the two words. Synthesis and creating. Somebody should make a comment about that. Somebody. What's the difference here? It's not quite the same. Creating, you're putting the elements together over things that you learn. They come up with something. Generating this structure. Synthesizing is that too, but creating is something else. Creating. In addition to that, I'm not disagreeing with anything she said, but there's something else, isn't there? Creating makes something good enough. Yeah, there's something new, isn't there? Right? Producing. Yeah, Producing. yeah. There's something new Producing coming something out. New. Right? Yes. That's what, what uh, Ben is talking about. That's what Mark said. And, and that's a very important distinction to make. And, and that's what we as educators are really aiming for these days getting the students to create something new. Yeah. Um, we could, I just remember one thing, we could also relate to the fact that in one of our previous classes when we were talking about the availability of information, like before, we were more concentrating on you know, getting information, but then now since everything is available, 
we make our students think more on how to mold it and fit it and actually do the creative stuff more than it was required previously. It's very good, very good point, very true. It's an excellent point. In fact, in fact, do me a favor, Johnny, could you do me a favor and just go up and put your hand right between application and analysis. Just stick your hand right there between the two. Right? If you look, yeah. just stick your hand. You know what? Now, just if you look, notice her body, I was blocking off the last, the bottom three. And it, it, in fact, isn't that what technology's done? If you look at that, you, know, you, you, you can move back now. I don't need to stand in front of the whole thing. But if you know, I just, I thought, I want to illustrate that. You look at that, and you think about that. Applying, understanding, remembering, or going back to the nouns, application, comprehension, knowledge, is essentially not completely. Of course, kids still don't have to know pieces of that. But technology has essentially hacked off those last three steps because so much of that is actually already done for you with the programming and technologies that are out there. So this is going back to what Lakshmi said, is, and you know, even with more enforcement on that, is yeah, we can push up a lot more at a lot younger ages too. You know, I look at my five-year-old son, as he's you now, I keep, keep going back to my five-year-old son seeing some of these processes, is that, you know, he, he can mess around with the computer and get, and get those last three, even at five years old. And he starts asking me questions about things that I know when I was five, I didn't have an opportunity to ask those questions because I couldn't get the answers at the bottom levels to get to that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It yes. matches what you were saying, right? Yeah. So um, there's another diagram that we have that maybe you have seen. And here we have a lot of verbs, a lot of verbs. And in the last few slides that we have, you'll see these kind of verbs again. And this is, I think, very applicable and very helpful when we are creating objectives for our lesson plans, learning objectives for our students and our lesson plans, also um, expected learning outcomes in our curriculum for the different subjects that we teach. And regardless of what you teach, this can be very helpful. So those action verbs, translating those different actions on the revised tax taxonomy into action verbs that actually translate into our objectives and what we expect our students to do and learn. At this point, um, we'd like just to give you a, a brief, one, one more quote. Um, would be, please help me if I say this wrong. Rene Descartes. Great. Okay, Rene Descartes. Okay, uh, the father of, of logic, and he makes this quote, to be possessed of a vigorous mind is not enough. The prime requisite is rightly to apply it. And how do you feel this quote kind of applies to what we've been talking about? Okay, good, excellent. Any other thoughts? Okay, good, excellent. It's like whatever knowledge you have, you should make it useful. Definitely, absolutely. Yeah, another great way to put it. And so we, we thought this was quite applicable to, applicable to what we've been sharing, what we've been doing. And so we want to just kind of turn this over to Zani, and we're going to very briefly, and I mean, I apologize, that we're going to very briefly go through these different levels with some of the verbs. And then give you a little quiz. I know our students in our classes kind of cringe when we, when we hear about that, but we'll have a little quiz, a little fun with some of the information we've got over in just a moment. Okay. 